Hi, everybody. This is Tanya Wilcox. I'm the program for partnerships and for scholar programs at the dream.us. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, in the webinar, we also have Sadana Singh, who is the program manager for scholar programs at the dream.us too, and she's also an alumni. And she'll be helping us answer your questions today. Um, the webinar today will focus on some great opportunities for all of you. For those of you who are in college right now, um, we will be talking about a summer internship with a National Grid, which is an energy company serving customers in the uh, New England area. And then for those of you who are um, about to graduate or have recently graduated, uh, they will also be talking a, about a, a graduate a fellowship type or internship type. They'll tell you a little bit more about that, um, that they have for uh, recent graduates that lasts a whole year and then that leads to a full-time employment. So um, those are two great opportunities that you'll hear us um, the presenters talk about uh, that we hope that you will apply for or if these if these are of interest to you. So let me introduce uh, the speakers for today. Uh, we have with us Valerie Iroyo, who is the manager for the Campus to Career team at National Grid. We also have uh, Ray Rachel Blankenship, who is the resource specialist for the intern program at National Grid. And then we have Kelsey Kennedy, who is the coordinator for the graduate development program that I recently spoke to you about. So before I turn the presentation over to them, uh, let's go to the next screen, uh, the next slide. A few housekeeping items for you scholars. One is know that this webinar will be recorded so that later we can uh, share this with all of our scholars. The second thing you should know is that in your control panel, there should be a section called handouts. And if you look in the handout section, there should be two things you, that you should be able to download. If you don't see them, please let us know via the question panel if you cannot find them. But the one of the handouts will be a copy to this um, PowerPoint, and the other handout is um, handout, but it's, there should be two handouts related to the national grid opportunities. So let us know if you cannot see that section in your control panel, and if you cannot, we will um, mail them to you along with a recording later on. The other thing is uh, that you should know is that there will be a time where you will be able to ask questions about these opportunities, and there are two ways in which you can ask those questions. One is by raising your hand. You'll see in your control panel there's a little hand with a green arrow. If you press on that, um, we will know that you want to ask a question live using your voice. So um, at that point, when, when it's the question period, we will um, call on your name. And when you, we call on your name, we, we will need you to unmute yourself so that, you, so that we can hear you. So the second way that you are able to ask questions is via the question box in your control panel. You can type in questions there. And again, during the question period, I will um, be able to read aloud those questions for the presenters to answer um, them for you. Um, again, that's it for the housekeeping items. So with that, let me uh, turn this over to Valerie, who will talk about National Grid and their opportunities. So thank you, Valerie, um, for being with us today. Please um, take it away. Great. Thanks, Tanya. Um, so as Tanya mentioned, my name is Valerie Rollo. I am the manager of our Campus to Careers team here at National Grid. And, and my job and my team's job is really to connect students to opportunities here at National Grid. Uh, I've got two of my team members here, um, Rachel Blankenship, who's our resourcing specialist for our intern program, as well as Kelsey Kennedy, who is our coordinator for our graduate development program. They'll be speaking a little bit later on about those programs in particular. Um, but I wanted to start off with giving you a little bit of information about National Grid overall as well. Um, and definitely wanted to thank Tanya and the team from the Dream.us for having us, um, arranging this for us to connect with you this evening. I think it's a really great partnership that I'm looking forward to. 
So um, one thing that I, I did want to start off with here at National Grid, safety is our number one priority. Um, just given the type of work that we do, we want to ensure that our employees are, are getting to work and at work in a safe manner and are going home um, as healthy, if not better, than they were when they got to work. So all of our meetings and all of our interactions at National Grid do start off with a safety message. So I'd be remiss if we didn't include one in this evening's presentation. Um, so just a quick note here um, is about distracted driving. So um, there are three main types of distracted driving and, and this slide shows some tips to how to avoid them. So the first is visual distraction. So that's things like your phone going off, you know, texting and driving, um, you know, looking over at your passenger in your back seat. So definitely ensure that you're keeping your eyes on the road. If you need to get directions, you should pull over to, to get them or to read them. And a really great tip is to put your phone in do not disturb mode while you're driving or even tuck it into the glove box where it's out of, you know, out of sight, out of mind for the duration of your trip. The second type of distracted driving is manual distraction. So things like brushing your hair, eating food, putting on makeup. Um, I, I was driving a few weeks back and I saw someone using an electric razor in the front seat of their car while they were driving. I didn't understand that one. Um, so just make sure again that you're not having anything manual distracting you. So don't reach for items. Um, it's best not to eat or drink while you're driving and, and make any adjustments to your seat or your steering wheel, your, your mirrors before you start your trip. And then the kind of third type of distracted driving is cognitive distractions. These are things that take your mind away from the road, things like being on the phone or just kind of zoning out if you're tired um, or had a bad day. So really ensure that you're staying focused on the road, keep your emotions in check. And if you ever feel, you know, too drowsy or distracted to drive, you know, pull over, um, see if there's another passenger in the car that can take over for you. So did you want to start our, our, our time this evening with a quick safety message? And then we do have a couple of poll questions just to gauge who's in our audience tonight. So, um, Tanya, would you mind running the poll questions? Sure. I am going to um, hold on a second, launch it in a second. <laughs> Thank you. Here you go. So, if everyone can take a few seconds and answer this question, if you are interested in which type of position, I see that about half of you have voted so far, and I will give you a few more seconds to continue voting before I close, I, I close the poll. Okay. Keep voting, everybody. We're almost there. We'll close this in about <laughs> three seconds. That's two, one. All right, I'm closing the poll, and I'm going to share the Results. So there you go, Valerie. Um, I actually can't okay, see. Should I go ahead and launch this? Because, yeah, do you mind just, if you can just read that to me, that works too. <laughs> yeah, so um, it looks like 78% 78, 78 of the 66 attendees that we have um, are interested in the summer intern. And then we have about 39% are interested in the post-graduation full-time position. Awesome, great. And so we'll definitely make sure to spend, uh, obviously, a good amount of time talking about both opportunities. We can definitely focus on our intern positions because the majority are interested in that. Um, and I think we have one additional poll question, yep. if you don't mind launching that. I'm launching that one right now. So scholars, you can start voting this in this one. And the question is, how familiar are you with National Grid? You guys are good. You're all voting. <laughs> see it. <laughs> okay. I'll give you five more seconds. Three, two, one. And I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And now I'm going to share the results. And it looks like of the 67 attendees that we have, 61% of them have never heard of National Grid before. 35% know a little bit about National Grid. And uh, only 4% um, do not know, uh, know, know a lot about the organization. So the okay. great majority have never heard of <laughs> National Grid. Okay, not a problem. Okay. Thanks so much for running those, Tanya. I appreciate it. So, 
Um, so for those of you who have never heard about us at all or, or know a little, that's more than fine. Um, we're definitely situated mostly in the Northeast U.S., so Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York. Um, so if you live outside of those areas, you may have never heard of us, which is perfectly fine. So I do want to spend a couple of minutes kind of giving you a high-level overview of National Grid. That way you've got a, a basic of, basis of understanding. And again, this um, on the, excuse me, on the slide right here is what we're going to cover today. So I'm going to do an overview. We'll talk about our summer intern program. Um, so kind of an overview of the program, what the requirements are, and what our process and timeline is like to select our interns. Then we'll take some time to talk about our graduate development program. So similarly, an overview, the requirements, and our selection process. And kind of intermittently, we can definitely take Q&A, but we'll leave a, a few minutes at the end for a more in-depth question and answer session if there are lingering questions. So as an overview of National Grid, and you'll, some of you who may have some familiarity may be surprised to see the United Kingdom listed here on the, on the slide, but National Grid, we are an international energy company. So our, our parent company um, is in the United Kingdom. So we're kind of the original National Grid before coming here to the Northeast U.S. So we were founded in the United Kingdom, and we do serve the entire country uh, with both their gas and their electric service. Um, we're one of the world's largest investor-owned utilities. Um, between our U.S. and our U.K. businesses, we have about 26,000 U.S. employees, or total employees, excuse me, um, of about $52 billion in assets. So that's, um, you know, our infrastructure that's in the ground, overhead, et cetera. So here in the U.S., and again, I mentioned this before, we serve um, kind of the Northeast U.S. So what you'll see on the slide here is our what we call our service territories. So in New York, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts is, is where we are operating. Um, so you'll see in a majority of upstate New York as well as western New York, we are the sole electric provider. Um, kind of throughout central New York region, we do both electric and gas service. And then in downstate New York, between Brooklyn and Long Island, we are a gas provider. Um, Rhode Island, we actually do about 90% of Rhode Island's gas and electric service combined. So you'll see that state, it's kind of hard to tell because it's so filled in. Um, we're the primary service provider. And then similarly in Massachusetts, we've got some territories that are just electric, some that are just gas, and then some that are both gas and electric. Here in the U.S., we have 7 million customers. And when we say customers here, that's actually the number of meters that we have um, in the homes and resident and um, commercial areas. So if you actually were to think about the number of people that we serve on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that would be more closer to the 20 million person mark. So um, 20 million customers rely on us every day for their energy needs. So they expect that when they go home and they want to cook their dinner, that when they turn on their gas stove, that they'll be able to cook their food that when they come in and they want to turn the lights on, that their lights will be working. So it's um, not everyone will think about us all the time, but we definitely hear about it, hear about it, and they'll think of us if their services are not working. So we really pride ourselves on having reliable service to our customers. In the U.S. business, we've got about 15,000 um, employees, and that makes up kind of our, our represented workforce, so those who are out in the field um, on a daily basis, as well as what we call our management employees, who are more office-based employees. And we've got an $18 billion rate base. Um, don't want to get into too much detail here, but we are a regulated industry, which means that the, the state and federal governments kind of set how much we're able to earn in, in return on our investments on an annual basis. Um, that's kind of where that number comes from there. So there is a third arm of our business. The last slide really talked about our, our gas and our electric businesses. And about a year ago, we launched this third piece of our business called National Grid Ventures. Um, Ventures is our unregulated business, so this is where we're able to invest more money and earn a greater return on our investment through some of the projects that you see listed on the screen here. Um, so Ventures is responsible for a lot of our onshore and offshore transmission work. Um, they've put in the largest LNG, so that's liquefied natural gas um, terminal within Europe. We're doing a lot with um, renewable projects, so things like um, solar, wind, et cetera. And then there is kind of a, a smaller branch of ventures um, that's working more in the venture capital industry. So they're investing funds into small energy startups that are kind of looking, we're partnering with to help grow our core business and achieve our vision for the future. 
Let me just click through. Okay, so a little bit more about us and kind of um, what we live on an every, everyday basis. So our purpose here at National Grid is to bring energy to life. Um, pretty simplistic, kind of um, uh, self-explanatory here. We want to bring energy to life for ourselves and for our customers that we serve. And our vision, so where we want to see ourselves going, is, is definitely exceeding the expectations of our customers, shareholders, and communities today, um, but also making possible the energy systems of tomorrow. So we're in a pretty radical time within the energy industry where customers are demanding more choice from their energy, more access to understanding their energy, and wanting to, to hook up renewables to our system. So again, things like solar, wind, et cetera, um, battery storage. So it's, it's definitely an exciting time to get involved in the energy industry. And then we do have two core company values. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, safety is kind of our top priority. And then these two things definitely are a very close second to that. So every day we do the right thing uh, and find a better way. And do the right thing really is it's pretty simplistic. It's, if you have a choice between doing the right thing and the wrong thing, it's making the choice to do the right thing. It's you know what your, your parents and teachers teach you from elementary school you know, up through now. And then we really are looking to, to find a better way. So our company has been around for, for quite a while. We're made up of a lot of um, smaller operating companies that came together through mergers and acquisitions. And there's a lot of um, opportunities there to improve our processes and improve our programs. So we encourage our employees, if they have an idea, to raise their hand and speak up and propose new and different ways of doing things. That's the only way that we'll advance into the future. So speaking of the future, just a couple of high-level um, overview of some of our special projects that we have going on as we think about where National Grid is going in the future. Um, so there's three examples I want to share here. The first is um, deploying renewables. I've talked about this a few different times with our, our solar, et cetera. So we've actually connected already hundreds of megawatts of solar to our network. Um, and in addition, we've recently connected the first offshore wind farm in the United States. So um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Block Island in Rhode Island, but we put in those you know, big spinning wind turbines that you may see um, you know, driving down the road actually in the middle of the ocean. And they're collecting the, the energy from the wind and, and feeding it back into our grid to serve our customers. We're also assessing non-wires alternatives. So obviously it costs money every time we put pipes and wires into the ground or, or overhead. Um, so one example of this is when it, when it comes to battery storage. So there's an island in, um, in Massachusetts called Nantucket, um, pretty much a seasonal island, or that's kind of what it was when National Grid started service there, where people would come in for the summer and not a whole lot of residency around. Um, as of late, Nantucket's really boomed with people staying more year-round or higher volumes of tourists or you know, long-term vacationers coming to the island for the summer. And the grid that we had in place to support their electricity just wasn't reliable. We didn't have enough there to, to support the peak in energy usage. So we actually partnered with Tesla um, to install a battery storage system on the island. So it's one way that we can store the energy that we're bringing out there and then deploy it when our customers have higher demand than we're anticipating. And then the last thing is investing in next generation solutions. So um, things like the example that you can see here is a customer on a, on a mobile app. Um, we've partnered with a company called Sense, S-E-N-S-E, -E, which gives customers real-time insights into the energy that they're using. So our customers can open their iPhone app or Android app, depending on what service they're using, um, and see, you know, if, if my kid's playing Xbox for two hours tonight, how much is that spending in electricity? Or if I'm running my washing machine, how much is that costing? So it's, it's getting customers to be more understanding of their energy usage, whereas right now our customers don't know what they're spending until they get their bill at the end of the month. So it's encouraging them to be more cognizant of hopefully being more sustainable and understanding their costs when they use their devices that are hooked to our network. So I want to spend a couple of minutes highlighting, you know, why National Grid is a great place to work, and then I'll, I'll transition over to Rachel to dive more in depth about our summer intern program. Um, but National Grid has an amazing suite of benefits that we offer to all of our employees, and we've actually won a handful of awards, which you'll see on the right-hand side of the screen there. Um, in 2018, we were awarded um, world's most one of the world's most ethical companies from an institute called the Ethisphere Institute. Um, this actually wasn't the first time that we won this award. We've received it for eight years in a row now. So this really ties back to one of our core values being do the right thing. We really encourage our employees to be ethical when it comes to all aspects of their, their careers with us. 
We also received an award from the Human Rights Campaign this past year as one of the best places to work for LGBTQ equality. So we're really proud of that one. Um, and then we also won an award recently for our 401k plan. Um, so we do have a really robust 401k plan for all of our employees. So not to harp on this too much, but just, I hope, you know, I know you all can, can take a look at the bullets here, but a lot of really great options for students. Um, so we do have a student loan repayment program. So if you are graduating and, and come to National Grid to work full time, National Grid recognizes the burden that people can have from repaying their student loans. So we will actually contribute up to $6,000 towards your student loans directly. Um, so that's a really great benefit for recent graduates. Um, we do also have a tuition reimbursement program. So if you um, are working with us full time and you want to go back to school to receive, you know, another degree, whether it's a, a master's degree, a, a law degree, a PhD, if you're really ambitious, um, National Grid will support up to 90% of the cost of tuition, um, which is, again, a great benefit. We're really proud of our employee development that we have. Uh, we give our employees, again, we, we're trying to lead the change in the energy industry, employees who purchase an electric vehicle will receive $5,000 back on the cost of that car. So we launched that about six months ago, and already about 150 employees have taken advantage of that benefit. We recently launched a parental bonding or a new parental bonding leave policy um, where all of our employees, regardless of whether they're male or female, can take up to eight weeks of, of full paid leave following the birth or adoption of a child. Um, and then we have other kind of fun benefits like a fitness reimbursement. So if you're, um, if you can show that you've gone to the gym a certain number of times in six months, we'll reimburse the cost of your gym membership up to a certain amount. And again, we really take pride in being active members of the communities that we serve. So we do encourage all of our employees to volunteer, um, definitely during work hours that's encouraged, but we also match any sort of um, financial donations that are, are uh, employees make to a nonprofit organizations up to $500 a year. So it's a really great way, again, to give back to our communities that we serve. So without further ado, again, hopefully you've got a little bit of a better understanding of who National Grid is as a company and the types of work that we do. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel to talk a little bit more about our summer intern program. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel, um, and as Valerie had mentioned previously, I am a resourcing specialist that oversees the internship program at National Grid, so I'm excited to share more information with you about um, our internship opportunities. So before going to the next slide, I wanted to, um, Valerie, sorry, if you can go back, uh, I just wanted to share with you about this photo. So if you'll notice on the t-shirt, it says Grid Turn. Uh, so that's actually the hashtag that we started last year um, for our summer interns. So you're going to hear me refer to our internship or our interns as grid turns a lot. So just wanted to kind of share that information with you. So just kind of a little bit about the summer internship program overview. So we do offer paid uh, summer internship opportunities, and they typically take place from May through August. And we have about 200 interns participating um, across our location. So the August time frame in May is just, it is, um, it does vary just based on a couple different factors, your availability, kind of the needs of the department. So um, there are different dates in May that you can start that I'll definitely share with you later. Um, but as Valerie had previously mentioned, we are a Northeast-based company. So our internship our opportunities are located across all of our locations. So that's New England, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, um, downstate New York, which would be the Long Island and Brooklyn area, and then upstate New York, which is anywhere from Albany to Buffalo. So um, over the past few years, we've continued to kind of perfect our program. So I just wanted to share with you that interns can uh, take advantage of wide range technical and operational opportunities through meaningful work experiences. You'll actually see one of the quotes listed below. I wanted to share another quote with you um, from a former intern from 2017. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. So I love how many events National Grid offered and organized for the interns. I felt really included in the company and met a lot of great people in it. I learned a lot this summer and really like National Grid's work environment. So once again, that is a direct quote from one of our former grid turns. So the great thing about our programs is that every year we do connect with our grid turns in order to receive feedback on how their summer went. So what they liked, what they didn't like, um, any feedback we, we gladly take because we want to continue to build our program to make sure that it is tailored to, um, you know, the target, our target audience. So I am happy to share with you, though, um, that about 96% of our eligible interns would be interested in coming back for another year, and 98% would recommend their internship. So we do have a high retention rate, um, and like I said, because we do put the time and the effort into 
um, making this program all about the intern coming in and making sure that it is, in fact, a great experience for you. So a little bit um, about our program opportunities in detail. So we have what's called a grid turn orientation. So that is provided to you on day one. So what, what happens is you come into the orientation and you meet with other interns. So it's a great opportunity for you to network with one another. You also get to learn more about National Grid. So we do invite um, at least one executive speaker. We have former interns or possible um, employees that went through the graduate development program. And we just have them sit down and kind of share their experience and why they chose National Grid and kind of what led them uh, to the department that they're currently in. So it's a great opportunity, once again, to network, but you get to learn a little bit about National Grid. Um, we also prepare you on kind of what to expect for the opportunities that are coming up in, in the summer. So during the summer, we do offer, as I had mentioned, different opportunities, one of them being a lunch and learn session. So we had certain groups, um, just to name a couple, we had what's called our community and customer group, and we had our ethics and compliance team. And they sat down with interns during lunch period uh, in a very informal setting and just kind of went over what they do at National Grid. So you get a better understanding of the different departments and opportunities. I, I like to share with people that I'm still constantly learning about all the departments we have because um, we have so many. So the goal is to kind of give you exposure um, as much as we can during that short period of time that you're here with us. We also offer site visits. And once again, all of these all of these opportunities are offered to all of our locations. So regardless if you're in Syracuse or um, in Massachusetts, you do have all opportunities to participate in these, in these um, site visits or lunch and learn sessions and whatnot. So one of the site visits I can um, inform you about was one that we had for an investment recovery center. And I, um, it's a great center and it kind of goes over how we provide um, money back to the company. So how do we save them? So for example, if we have old meters coming in that we can no longer use, what can we salvage off of them to help kind of um, put back into the company? So it's a great site. It's not a department that's well known. So we kind of gave them the opportunity to go out and learn a little bit more about National Grid. And once again, about an opportunity that they might not have heard of um, originally. Volunteer opportunities are offered throughout the summer as well. It does allow you to network with other employees and interns. Um, in some locations, we're able to do an intern-only volunteer opportunity. For example, in Brooklyn, we had um, Prospect Park. So it was kind of giving back and whether that be cleaning up the park and helping plants. Um, we also had one in Liverpool, New York, so that's the Syracuse location, um, that was at the thrifty shopper, so kind of helping sort clothes um, so that they can have put them out on the shelves. So it was with the other interns, so you had the ability to kind of work with one another, get to know each other outside of the office. It's always fun to kind of break up that 40-hour um, week internship opportunity, especially if you are at a desk for most of it. So definitely a great opportunity to kind of get you out into the community. And as Valerie had mentioned, community is very big here at National Grid and kind of giving back to the communities that we serve. So end of summer presentation. So at the end of the summer, we definitely want to hear about your experiences and how they went. So we do ask that you um, pro provide um, a presentation to us and we have you speak out to fellow interns, your managers, directors, even our executive team, they all come and listen and hear what you liked, what you didn't like, um, all the projects that you worked on. So it's a great opportunity, one, to improve your public speaking skills, even though I don't think anyone wants to work on that, but definitely something that is always good too. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to kind of network with other managers. So I've actually had some interns come back and say, this was a great opportunity. I was able to connect with another hiring manager and a different team. Um, and kind of learn about future, possibly future opportunities and coming back into a different department. So it kind of, once again, helps you with that networking piece. Uh, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So what makes a summer internship, a summer intern? So we wanted to make sure that we shared with you our, our qualifications. So you must be pursuing a college degree from an accredited institution. Um, you do have to be registered as a full-time student. So you must be registered now and you must be continuing your education. So unfortunately, if you're graduating in May 2019 and not continuing on as a full-time student, you're not eligible for the internship program. You know, the graduate development program might be something that you're interested in, which you'll hear a little bit about later. Uh, but you do have to be enrolled. Uh, you need to be authorized to work in the United States for the entire duration of the internship. Once again, that's May through August timeframe. Uh, you do need to have a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.0 as an undergrad and 3.2 for a graduate student. And then we kind of get into a little bit more um, specifics in terms of what we're looking for on your resume. So not only do we want you to be 
um, excelling at school and kind of and going for the degree we're looking for, but we want you to be a well-rounded candidate. So we want to make sure that you have had a college leadership position, that you've been out in the community and giving back. Um, maybe you've had a full-time or part-time job and kind of what that consisted on, consisted. Anything to really show your leadership potential, we want to make sure that you're a well-rounded candidate because um, it all definitely plays into your internship opportunity with us. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So if you are, in fact, interested after my little spiel, um, our opportunities are available right now on our careers website. So you'll see that right there on the slide deck. Um, they are listed by location and functional area. So for example, you'll see a summer intern. It'll be listed as business, finance, other, um, Waltham, Massachusetts. So each location will have their own. Um, for an engineering focus, you'll see electrical, mechanical, civil, um, and you'll also see environmental. So even if you don't see necessarily your, your major specifically listed there, I would um, definitely encourage you to apply. We do, what happens with our process is we're working with our hiring, hiring managers right now to determine what they're looking for. And once they've identified, we'll kind of pull from um, these specific postings. So we might be looking for, say, um, a supply chain management major, even though that's not necessarily listed in the title. So don't let that deter you. Feel free to apply mainly to whatever location you're really interested in. You can definitely be considered for our opportunities. We wanted to make sure that we definitely provided you the timeline. So our applications do close on um, December 9th, 2018. So you can apply from any time between now and December 9th. Uh, definitely the earlier the better. It's never a bad thing just so, so that way your application's in and you don't have to worry about it. Um, but we do have interviews going on. So they're going on anywhere from the next couple weeks all the way through early February. Um, and our hiring managers will set that up. And at that time, so while you are applying to a little bit more of a, a general posting, they'll give you a much better understanding of the department and kind of what they're looking for in a candidate, obviously, so you can make the best decision for yourself. Offers will be made um, no later than February 22nd. Just to, once again, give you an idea so you're not concerned if you're not hearing back. We do give our hiring managers uh, a little bit more of a, of a longer time frame, but offers are made no later than February. So I had mentioned previously that you do start with an orientation. We have four different orientation dates at that time. Once again, you come in with other interns. We do have four just to accommodate your, your um, school schedule. So if you end a little bit later, no big deal. Maybe you're targeting that June. So that is something that's decided once you've accepted later on as you get closer to our process. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. So that kind of brings us to the end of the information about the summer intern program. I did just want to mention two things. There was a question that came in um, from the audience about whether or not these are paid internships. Um, yes, all of our internships here at National Grid are paid. Um, the rates of pay do vary depending upon the location you're working out of as well as um, what year you are in school and your major. Um, so that's a little bit of information from that question from the audience. So thanks for asking. Um, the other thing I did want to reiterate, and I know Rachel mentioned this a little bit, and I sort of kind of brought this to everyone's attention earlier on in the presentation, so I, I apologize for that, is that, you know, here at National Grid, although we are an energy company and we do gas and electric utility work, we hire pretty much all majors. So we've got obviously a lot of engineers that work with us from electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering. But we do also have, um, you know, the whole business that supports that. So accounting, finance, procurement, um, human resources, communications. There's really a, pretty much a spot for everybody and everyone's skill set somewhere in National Grid's team. So um, don't think that if you're not an engineer that you wouldn't fit in here. That's definitely not the case. Um, so before we move on to the, the portion about our graduate development program, I did just want to take a second to see if there were any other questions from the audience. So if you have a question about the intern program, um, again, as, as Tanya shared, feel free to type it in the chat box or you can raise your hand on the toolbar on the side. So we'll just wait a second for any questions um, to come in. And if there are none, then we'll move along to the GDP portion. So you would like to take some questions right now? Because I, I do see some that come in. Can I read them to yeah, you? But there's some like, yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Tanya. Okay. So there's a question about work authorization in DACA. So uh, yes, you all need to have work authorization. That means I either have DACA or TPS during the duration of the internship. Uh, so that's May through August. 
Uh, so if your DACA yeah. is about to expire, definitely renew it ASAP to make sure that it's renewed before that date of May. Um, um, so uh, you, you will need to have that in place. Okay, uh, the other thing. Another question, are the interviews in person? What if you live in another state? Great question. So, that's a so great if you, yep, go ahead, Rachel. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I was actually about to say the same thing. So that's a great question. So we do give our hiring managers the ability to either conduct phone interviews or in person. So if you are out of the area, that's completely fine. Our hiring managers are used to, are, are used to conducting phone interviews. So they'll set up a phone screen with you um, and they'll kind of go over the same questions that they would, would it be in person? Okay, the other question is about um, for students that don't live in the area where the positions are held, um, how is housing uh, managed by those students? What have you seen other students do? So once again, that's another great question. Um, I can share that we unfortunately do not provide a housing stipend or any type of relocation benefits for internship opportunities. We typically recommend that you reach back out to your school and maybe work with your career services department to see if they have any recommendations on where you can stay in the area. Um, and then honestly, I would say our success rate once students do that is very high about finding a location when they kind of work with their school directly. And I think the other great part is that a majority of our, um, our work locations are in, in kind of major metropolitan areas, so between Syracuse, Providence, Waltham, and, and downstate New York. So there are typically, you know, subletting opportunities or, or people who are looking um, for, for roommates, et cetera, during that time period. So the scholars would need to find their own housing for that summer. And uh, they would basically use either their career services or Craigslist or so, or, or some subletting um, sites to find housing. And the question is, yes. would, would your internship pay enough to cover the housing that the students would have to pay for while they do the internship with you? Um, again, it's, it's hard for us to answer that question 100% because our intern rates of pay do vary based upon a number of different factors and, and not knowing what types of housing situations the scholars may be looking for. Um, you know, we're happy to work with, with applicants or hires when, you know, they are extended and have accepted an offer um, with what their rates of pay are and, and provide opportunities and, and resources for them to find housing, but it's impossible for us to guarantee that their stipend would cover all of that housing costs. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's another question here. There's lots of questions about housing. So they're asking if someone's uh, doing industrial engineering, what do you recommend they apply for if in a specific location? Uh, so I can, this is Rachel, I can definitely answer that one. So just to let you know, even though we have internship opportunities across our jurisdictions, we typically have opportunities in Syracuse, New York, Waltham, Massachusetts, and Brooklyn, just because those are our three main U.S. locations. Um, just to say that those are more opportunities, but we definitely will have opportunities in all of the locations that were previously provided. Uh, but when you do apply, you'll see either um, a civil or mechanical engineering posting. Feel free to apply to either one of those. Um, because we do have a way to kind of pull out industrial engineer majors, which I can share with you. We are looking for a couple right now in some of our openings. So it, we are looking for industrial engineers. It's definitely a good major to have with our company. Um, and feel free to apply to either the civil engineering internship opportunity or the mechanical, either one. Um, and we'll kind of be able to find your application that way. And the other thing I'd like to add, and Rachel, I apologize if you already mentioned this, is that um, applicants can apply for more than one position. So if you're open to multiple locations or open among multiple functional areas, um, you can apply to multiple postings, and it's fairly easy to do so once you've completed your first application. Good. That was one, definitely one of the questions. Um, Let's see, should we move on to the next opportunity and we'll take questions later on? And uh, Sadana, has anyone raised their yeah. hand? 
Um, yes, we actually have one raised hand. So I will call on Mohammed Kamran. Mohammed, you can unmute yourself and ask the question to the presenters now. Opportunity is available for students that don't have DACA. Just regular residents, are they available to take like action on this opportunity? Hey, Mohammed, um, you are. Oh, sorry, I just want to comment that as long as you have work authorization for the duration of the internship, whether it's through DACA or through another means, you're welcome to apply and, and you'd be eligible. All right, that answers it. Okay, let's move on to the graduate uh, program and then we'll take more questions after that. Great, thanks, Tanya. So I will pass it over to Kelsey, who will share some more with you about our graduate development program. And again, then we'll, we'll take some questions at the end of this section as well. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Kelsey. Greetings from Waltham, Massachusetts. I'm excited to share with you some more information about our National Grid graduate development program that we here have at our company. Uh, so to start with an overview, there we go. <laughs> Um, National Grid's Graduate Development Program is our company's flagship pipeline program. We're really targeting recent college graduates with joining the company in entry-level full-time positions. One thing I do want to clarify, as this is an info session for both internships and graduates, is that these are full-time positions with the company. So after you complete orientation, you are going to a full-time role. You are not leaving at the end of the summer. So these are full-time positions with the company. I'll talk a little bit later on about the qualifications of what uh, we are looking for for our graduates, um, but for now, I'll just share a little bit more about the program in general. So our goal here at National Grid with the Graduate Development Program is to really help develop young professionals like yourselves to become future leaders of the company. We hope, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years or so, you can say you started at National Grid with um, a summer internship or you were part of the Graduate Development Program. So we're really kind of after building future leaders here. So through this program, we really provide you the tools and opportunities to help develop those skills and also, you know, build a strong foundation. Um, so our kind of three components of the program that we do this are, we, the first piece is our GDP orientation. So all graduates um, will start their careers off in National Grid with an eight-week orientation. I like to equate this as a little bit of National Grid summer camp, boot camp, all into one where you'll spend time with your fellow graduates really learning the core functions of the business. So you spend time learning about intro to gas, intro to electric, you learn about all the different business sides of the business as well. We get you doing some really cool hands-on things. You get to go up in bucket trucks, you get bucket trucks, excuse me, um, do some pipe wielding, we get you doing some volunteer opportunities in our communities. And then the last couple weeks of orientation, you get to spend time traveling to our different jurisdictional areas. So you get to spend a week in upstate New York, going to Buffalo and Syracuse, visiting those offices. Um, you spend a week in downstate New York, seeing our Brooklyn office and also our Long Island offices. Um, you spend time in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and really just learning the ins and outs of our jurisdictions and seeing how National Grid really operates and how we operate as a company. Um, we also, what I forgot to mention is that we really try to get you as much executive exposure during these eight weeks as possible. So we set up different lunch and learns with executives, different meet and greets, where you're really able to pick the minds of these really great leaders that have such great experience and diverse backgrounds and learn a kind of about the career paths and just more about the future of energy. Um, I know I get to be a fly on the wall during these conversations, and it's really interesting for me. And not many people get this opportunity so early on in their careers to really have these great conversations with leaders. Um, in addition, you are going to be with your fellow graduates. This past year, we had 28 of them. Um, so you really get to bond and have a network because you spend, you know, eight weeks together traveling, learning, and doing some great teamwork and collaboration together. Um, so the two other additional components. So after the eight-week orientation completes, that would be the end of July time frame you would return to the business to your full-time position after you know building and learning at that strong foundation during that orientation piece. Um, so but throughout the first year in the company we do have some great opportunities for you. Um, throughout that first year we hold quarterly development sessions. We get the graduates back together at least three times where we kind of continue that learning and development for those leadership skills. So some past examples of these development sessions, we've done effective communication and public speaking workshops. 
we've done some future of energy panels where we have some senior leaders really talk about the future of energy and where we're headed and kind of, you know, where is National Grid going to look in all of this? Um, and we've done, you know, some conflict management workshops as well. So some really great stuff to kind of continue that learning and development. Then the last component of the graduate development program is our capstone project. Um, and that will kick off at the end of the graduate's first year with the company. Um, these capstone projects, um, an executive with a national grid would sponsor a business problem that graduates would be broken up into groups and they would have three to four months to kind of work on this business problem. It's really neat for the graduates because um, you're all from different backgrounds, different you know, majors, different departments, and you get to work all together to kind of solve this problem that you might not normally have the opportunity to work so in your normal day-to-day -day job. At the end of the um, you know, a few months, you'll present your findings out to the different executives, to your managers, to your peers. Um, and it's just a really great work to kind of, one, use your network, but also do some really great meaningful work for the company that you might not have had the opportunity to do so otherwise. So what makes a graduate? Um, so as the purpose of the GDP is to hire high potential individuals into the company, we do have some minimum qualifications for our graduates. We do require our graduates to have a bachelor's or a master's degree from an accredited institution. Um, graduates have to be graduated between May of 2018 and May of 2019 to be considered for the June 2019 cohort. Um, so if you're graduating this December, so December of 2018, you still qualify for the June 2019 cohort. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make that clear as well. We do have a strict policy about our graduates earning a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. We're really after that, you know, high potential talent. We also require all of our graduates to have a valid driver's license with safe driving history. And this is due to all that travel during that orientation piece I was talking about earlier. Um, and also, as this is a competitive leadership program, we do look for our graduates to have you know, strong communication skills, teamwork skills, there's a lot of you know, team bonding, teamwork during those eight weeks, and also in your normal day jobs as well. So we're really looking for those kind of skills. We'd love to see those leadership skills you know, through your student government. Um, we'd love to see if you read captain of the cross team. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be on campus. We know we do, there's other volunteer opportunities outside of campus that you might be a part of as well. And we also just love to see those, you know, past internship experiences that, you know, really demonstrate all the hard work that you've accomplished during your year at school. So to share some more information about our GDP selection process and timeline, so as it is boldly on the screen, um, that is our careers website where you can find all of our graduate development program positions. We currently have over 50 different positions listed on our careers website. We actually have a really cool button. If you go to that careers website, um, you can just click the button that says graduate development program, and it'll come and list all the different positions. Um, you'll see the specific positions, and you'll also see the location of where those positions will be located. So we have different engineering positions, different electrical, mechanical, civil. We have different business, a lot of finance positions, HR positions. Um, we have IS positions. So like back to what Valerie and Rachel were saying, we really do hire for all majors. And we also encourage you, similar to the internship program, apply to as many different positions that you feel interested that, or that meet your specific background and interest. We understand that you can have multiple interests um, and you know, meet the skills of different you know, job postings. So we really encourage you to apply to those locations and jobs that you feel are best fit for you. So applications are like, being accepted until November 12th. So a month and a day from now. So feel free to go home tonight or if you want to you know, work on your cover letters and resumes, um, you have a little over a month to do so. If you meet the minimum qualifications for our program and also for the position, the next step would be for you to take an online assessment. This just tests your numerical and verbal skills um, and we'll be sending those out late October, early November timeframe. Um, it's nothing too crazy. It's just a 30 minute assessment, just making sure you're meeting the benchmarks of those high potential candidates that we're really after here for our program. If you are successful with the online assessment, the next step would be um, to have a phone interview with a member of the Campus to Careers team. So that would be either myself or Rachel or Valerie, who's also on the line. And just to make sure that one, you're still interested in the position and also to make sure that you're a good fit for both the program and also the role itself. 
And then the final step of the um, selection process would be to come in for an in-person interview. We do host all of our in-person interviews in person during the week of January 28th through February 1st of 2019. So definitely, if you are interested in the graduate development program, mark this on your calendars because we are pretty strict with only hosting during this week. Um, we do we host half-day interviews for each position um, that include both an individual and group component. So I did want to kind of make that make sure you're aware of that. Um, we also will pay for your logistics and travel to get to the interviews as well. So I just wanted to make that clear as well. We do have a quick kind of turnaround time for our hiring managers. So we'll have all offers made by February 15th of 2019 and then a start date of June 3rd of 2019 for the graduate development program. So I think that's all I have to share, but I'm happy to listen to Valerie as well to answer any questions that you might have about these full-time opportunities within the graduate development program here at National Grid. Thanks, Kelsey. So our, our last slide that we have up on the Thank screen you. now we is... Definitely have Sorry, I was going to share. The last that we have up on our, our screen is our, our contact information of, for those of us presenting from National Grid. The other comment that I, I did want to make in regards to our graduate development program is it is fairly competitive. We bring in, um, you know, between 30 and 40 graduates on an annual basis. But outside of our GDP, we do have a lot of other traditional full-time roles that are posted. So if you're interested, I do encourage all of you who may be graduating to keep an eye on our careers website for those opportunities as well. Um, but did want to turn it over to um, those of you who are in the audience to see if there's any remaining questions about the intern program or about our graduate development program that we can answer. Sure. So here's some questions. Um, it says, so if I graduate in May 2019, are we still eligible to participate in the June program or the graduate yes. program? Yep. All right. Um, if for the internship program, this is my first semester in college. Should I apply as a freshman? Yeah, so definitely feel free to apply. We offer internship opportunities from freshmen all the way to seniors continuing on their education. So it doesn't hurt to apply. Okay, here's uh, someone asking, how much experience in accounting do you expect? for an intern applying for the accounting position? So for an intern, once again, it does um, depend on the department that's looking to hire, but most of the time um, they're willing to kind of help, help you and kind of train you. So as long as you have the degree, but you also have the experience that we're looking for in terms of volunteering or, or previous part-time or full-time opportunities, uh, we can definitely bring you in and kind of teach you everything that we need to do. So don't let that deter you. Um, there's no set limit. Um, it's just as long as you're interested, feel free to apply. And then we can definitely work with you and kind of teach you um, what you need to know for the role. Great. And a couple of questions from um, students majoring in computer science. I'm uh, interested to know if you have positions for those kind of majors. So for the internship opportunities, I can share that we have um, two two postings. You'll see them for Waltham, Massachusetts. And um, Hicksville, New York, which is in Long Island. Um, that's where we focused for the internships. I know, Valerie, you're gonna speak for the graduates. Yeah, I was gonna say, we have, we have a very large information technology group at National Grid that ranges from everything from cybersecurity to software engineering to coding skills. Um, for our graduate development program, we do have um, eight positions within IT for the 2019 cohort. So definitely um, lots of opportunities for computer science majors. Okay, and then uh, I have a comment and a question from a scholar. She is saying, I'm already falling in love with National Grid. I'm so in tune with my values. And she's interested in knowing how the company is able to maintain its ethical values and, and be successfully financially. That's a great question, and I'm glad to hear that you're falling in love with our company because I think the three of us on the, on the call would share the same. We're very proud of the organization that we work for and excited to be a part of it. Um, I think when it comes to our, our ethical piece, I think it's really it's, it's instilled from day one in our employees. Uh, and part of that comes from a recruitment and selection process as well. You know, we want to hire people that show 
really strong leadership qualities and the potential to be successful and be ethical in their roles. Um, so we recruit for that type of person, but also, you know, from day one, when all of our new hires go through the orientation process, they're taught about our ethical um, contributions that we're making about our code of ethics that all of our employees are required to to adhere by. And, and it's not to say that we all think every day, oh, I have to be ethical. I think it's just kind of instilled in the, the work that we're doing. Um, when it comes to the question and there were the comment about kind of profitability, I think that because people are so committed to the work that they're doing and the doing it the right way that we're able to meet our metrics when it comes to our regulators who set our rates and our ability to earn a profit. Um, so because of that, we are able to keep our, our company and our, our assets reliable for our customers um, and, and not face any sort of fines for downtime, et cetera. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. um, so Donna, do we have any uh, raised hands? No, we actually have no raised hands at this moment. Okay. And so, um, okay, let's take a couple of questions. Uh, someone's asking that uh, since you uh, mentioned that uh, for the internship, for the summer internship positions, there's no relocation help. They want to know if that's the same um, policy applies for the graduate positions or if there is relocation help for graduate positions. Yep. Great question. Um, so with our, our GDP positions, um, hire, it's up to the hiring managers and the department's discretion as to whether or not they would provide a sign-on bonus, um, which would be to help with relocation. Um, as an entry-level employee, you wouldn't be eligible for our, our kind of standard um, company relocation assistance. That being said, all of the GDP positions are full-time roles and come with a full-time salary, um, of which they should be more than enough to you know, sustain cost of living in whichever location you're working in. Um, so again, sign-on bonuses to aid in relocation are, are kind of at the discretion of the department, but I would always encourage you, you know, if you are offered a position either at National Good or elsewhere to, to advocate for yourself and inquire as to whether or not sign-on bonuses are, are an option because we can always work with our managers to see if they're willing to contribute to that. Right. I think someone has raised their hand, Sadana. Is that true? Yes, we have Alejandro. Um, you may unmute yourself and ask your question, Alejandro. Uh, yes, hi. Um, good evening. Uh, just a question. Um, how many students? I mean, how many students do you get from out of state? Uh, basically, like from down south or from any anywhere part of the United States. Like, do you get students from Florida, California, Washington? Hey, Alejandro, great, great question. I would say with our graduate development program, we really do see students from all over. Um, of our, our 30 that we brought in this past year, probably 15 of them were from the, the service territories that we operate in, so between New York and New England. And the other half were from, from different universities or, or areas that we did a lot of targeted outreach with. Um, I think with our intern program, and Rachel, maybe you can speak to this a little bit more, I think there's a greater majority that are either going to school or have a you know a home within the areas that we operate in but there's definitely been grid turns who have come from outside of our area as well thank you any other raised hands Sadana? no no other raised hands at this moment okay um so i imagine valerie that scholars are may contact any of, the, any of the of you with more questions? Definitely. Yep, feel free to reach out to, to any of us if you have questions. Um, and if you apply and you want to drop us a line to let us know that you've applied, we're happy to, to hear those emails and take a look for your application as well. We're coming to the end of the webinar. I know there's some more questions on that we might not have been able to answer um, given the time. But please do reach out to these um, to the people here that you have their, their emails. Um, one last question for you, for me, is um, if I the dream that you a student is applying for your internship, is there a way in the application, or how should they let you know that they are a the dream that you a scholar? Yep, great question. I think that you know, you can reference it in your in your cover letter on your resume. That's a way to let us know. Um, there's nowhere on the actual application, so kind of the different 
fields that you'd fill out um, on a form to apply to, to note that. Um, but again, if you do apply, feel free to reach out to one of us via email, just flagging your application to us, or you can include it in any of the materials that you submit. So uh, scholars, if you are going to apply, I highly encourage you to let um, Valerie, Rachel, or Kelsey know that you are submitted on an application and that you are the dream.us scholar. So um, that your application can be um, considered in that light. And um, we would also really appreciate it if you would let us know at the dream.us. You can email me at Tanya, T-A-N-I-A dot Wilcox um, at the dream.us and let me know if you are applying. Uh, that would be um, important also for me to know. So I would ask that of you. And I think that that said, I really want to thank you, Valerie, Rachel, and for um, ex explaining this great opportunity for our scholars. We hope that we get some of them uh, hired by you either through this, mm -hmm. uh, the summer the graduate program. Um, thank you again. Thank you, scholars, so much for being available on uh, this webinar. Um, recording will be shared with you in the next day or two so that if you want to go back and listen to it again you will be able to do so and with that um, good evening everybody have a great rest of the day and we will talk to you again next time bye bye everybody bye thanks tanya good to talk with you all okay thank you bye bye